everybody and welcome back to the Sweet Easy. I'm Zach. I'm Jake. Where are the Dirt Road Ben? Today, go. Today we have uh, Dalmore 12. Yes, I have been wanting to review this since before we were even reviewing whiskey. I've been wanting to try it at least because of the first Kingsman movie that in 1962 Dalmore. Uh. Like six people died before anybody take, took a drink. <laughs> <laughs> The first guy to take a drink also got cut in half. <laughs> oh. Then another guy took a drink, and then a third guy took a drink. Guess I don't remember that. The scene with uh, Mark Hamill at the beginning of the first Kingsman, where the guy comes in to save him and kills all the people. Mark Hamill's oh, tied to the chair. Yeah, 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 and then yeah. he goes to answer the door, and it's Samuel L. Jackson, but before he can answer the door, the chick cuts him in half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Long ways. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then they cover up all the bodies with sheets. Okay. Yeah. So, that's cool, because this uh, comes into pop culture twice. Okay. Um, so, uh, it was founded in uh, 1839 by Alexander Matheson, and he ran it for 28 years, and then he decided to uh, pass it on to an Andrew and Charles McKenzie. Uh, oh, I remember the other way now. And they brought with them their family crest. Uh, it's a 12 point stag. And so, if anybody watches the movie, uh, or not the movie, uh, this TV series, uh, Outlander, she is with the McKenzie clan. And that's them. Yeah. Keep going. So, uh, the stag was awarded to uh, the clan chief Colin of Kintail uh, in 1263. This is a 10-point stag, but I'd rate it higher. I don't know if you can hear that. This is a 10-point stag, but I'd rate it higher. <laughs> Fair? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Colin of Kintail uh, was awarded the 12-point stag uh, by the uh, King of Scotland, King Alexander the Third, in 1263. I already said that, but you distracted me. So. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, because he saved the king from a uh, charging stag, and with the crest, he also received the lands of Elian Donan. It's it's Scottish. I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, the Scottish have. Uh... I wonder if that's Gaelic. I thought Gaelic was only Ireland, but maybe the Scottish lean on Gaelic too, because they have a lot of like Gaelic-ish pronunciations. Uh -huh. I think so. Anyway, so they got those lands, and then he also awarded him the motto Luke Lucio Luceo non uro, I shine not burn. So and then in 1917, the British Royal Navy. Um, started using uh, the Firth next to the distillery to make mines. Explosive like mines, mines. Like deep sea mines. You know you have the little bubbles in Finding Nemo? Yeah. Those. I heard a fun joke the other day. Okay. It was uh, this guy started his own business in uh, Afghanistan. <laughs> he was uh, <laughs> making landmines that look like prayer mats. He said his profits were going through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that is a great one. That is an instant classic. It is. It's it's excellent. Anyway. So, speaking <laughs> of explosions and mines, yeah, like half the distillery blew the fuck up and burned down because of that. Because of the mines. Man, when you start whiskey distilleries on fire, it just, it's a bad day. It is probably more... Freshly distilled grain alcohol is probably more flammable than gasoline. In fact, they put it into gasoline. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so Alexander, it is legal to distill your own gasoline, by the way, in America. Yep, you can distill your own corn alcohol, grain alcohol for fuel. So Alexander remained in a legal battle with the Royal Navy for the next half a decade. 
Okay. Um, the distillery remained in the Mackenzie family until the 60s when one of Dalmore's main customers uh, took control. And they still run it today. And these are aged for nine, this is aged for nine years in ex bourbon casks. Mm -hmm. And then they split it. Mm -hmm. And half stays in the bourbon cask and half goes into sherry casks. Yep. And they have a very specific company they source their sherry from, and it has to be 30 year old sherry. Oh, okay. That the barrels are. It's on a bottle. I figured. I just didn't want to. I guess this might be more reputable than this. <laughs> yeah. Still, uh, you know, we do take the time to do our own research for you guys. Yeah. Um, for science. This is mostly because it gives us an excuse to buy tax deductible whiskey, but you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, this is 40% alcohol and it's a single malt, so it's everything's distilled in one distillery and it is malted barley. It also, um, it's a Highland scotch. Uh, you can tell that right away when you taste it. There's that hint of smoke that you get in Highland that I barely notice anymore because I've spent so much time drinking Isla whiskey. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you compare it to Speyside, you notice. Oh yeah. They're... And I know there are other reason regions, but the most common regions you can find anything from are Speyside Highland and Isla. We haven't tried anything from Campbelltown. Have we, we really haven't. No. Wow. Um, we've tried a one Lowlands, if I think I remember. I think I remember us doing it, but I don't remember what whiskey it was. But I thought we had a Lowlands whiskey. It might have just been one that was blended with Lowlands whiskey, though. I don't remember. Uh, so we might have to look for that, too, sometime. But the only reason we didn't work our way around a Dalmore at this point is they use a uh, food coloring, which is something I would kind of give them flack about. But you know what? If you can get away with it, I do like that color. But it's uh, wheat-based, and part of the whole reason... Jake here transitioned more to whiskey than beer as he has a gluten problem that developed possibly from killing a little too much of the bacteria in his stomach with alcohol. Maybe. Not necessarily. Not necessarily, but I'm just saying. <clears throat> but, well, I mean, I've had... <laughs> I'm just giving you shit, dude. Antibiotics and probiotics and I know. all that. And... I'm just busting your bowl. Yeah. All one of them. We haven't said shit about the whiskey and we're at least five <laughs> minutes into this. Yes, we have. Okay, it's we haven't said shit about the taste. Very, the very fruity. Uh, yes, very fruit forward, you might say. <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> he did before the video started. Um, it's just super friendly. It is. It is a little. I would like to see another two to three percent out of this whiskey. It's just yeah. a little bit thin on the tongue. A lot of scotches and Irish whiskeys are proofed down to forty, and I get it. But just that that little two to three percent, you're still diluting it, and it just gives it a little bit more body that I would appreciate. That's the only thing I would change about this whiskey, though. It is a solid offering. I mean, there are, there are things that I would like more, but that's the one thing I would change that they could do easily. I would like, just for fun, cast strength. I want cast strength everything. Especially I want to try a cast strength ver version of everything. And then I always tell myself that I want to dilute it to the proof that I like. And I, I never, never have even tried. Never. <laughs> I, I sat there. I, I, I attempted to with some stack. And I sat there and I had a little bottle of water and the straw. And I'm sitting there and I'm just staring at this glass of whiskey. And I'm like, I'm not going to run it. <laughs> I, I did try Rare Breed over ice because one of the perks of cast strength whiskey is it should stand up to ice well. And I just, I mean, it was still good, but I just wanted to cry. Like, now I have cold one. It's like, you know, the, the, <laughs> the birth of my children, the movie Warrior, and pouring good whiskey over ice. Fuck my shit up, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Especially with, like, Rare Breed or probably even the Russell's Reserve. Um, Re Russell's Reserve punched above a Rare Breed. Yeah, yeah. But, oh, I see what you're saying. It's basically what you're going to get pouring those two products over ice is you're going to get cold wild turkey 101 yes just, if, if that's what you're after just pour a glass stick it in the freezer for like 20 minutes or get some whiskey stones or yeah and then you're not going to dilute it but it'll still be cold and you'll be fine 
But that said, now that we've ranted about 40% for a minute, it, I do get um, figs on this as well as the normal, like, plums. It's a dark fruit forward. I don't get anything like grapes, like white grapes anyway, or, or anything like that, which sometimes happens with wine. Like wine finished stuff, like sherry. Oh, I was like, going to say, sometimes you get white grapes on wine. <laughs> no fucking wonder. Anyway, uh, but what was running through my head was both the dark rye and... Um, I have noticed in some sherry cask finished whiskeys, and even uh, the Rieger, which has some sherry blended into it, th that I do get kind of a, a grape-esque note there. It's it's the most forward, the most with forward whiskey on grapes that I can think of is the dark rye. Yeah. But this is a uh, a solid Scotch. At the price point, I would probably go for Highland Park 12 over this, but I haven't been able to find Highland Park 12 lately. I don't know if it's going away, but I don't like it if it is, because that's one of my favorite scotches. Mine too. Which is hilarious, based on the first time I drank it. Yeah. It was just so different. I was so used to bourbon that scotch was uh, a really weird one for me. Yeah, if you've never had any kind of scotch before and you try that, it's... It's gonna taste smoky as shit. It tasted like liquid smoke to me the first time, and now in Highland whiskeys, I barely notice the smoke. I don't at all. Yeah. Um, I would give this a solid 8. Okay. If they proofed it up, they could probably get to a 9. If it was cask strength, maybe aged to, say, 16 years, you... or, and not cask strength, I bet it could punch a 10. I think their next offering is 15. Well, they have a non-age statement offering, too, but oh, okay. they, I do I mean, think they have a 15. They do. Um, for many years, you couldn't get this uh, younger than a 12. 12 was the youngest they had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, something about the name Dalmore d does get highly respected. I like having it in the cabinet right here next to the stag, just because we have an American stag whiskey and a, and a, a Scottish stag whiskey. Um... But yeah, solid, solid scotch. It is, despite the fact that I would choose Highland Park 12 over it, I would definitely, definitely recommend that you try the Dalmore. Yes. And if uh, uh, if you want to compare this to any American whiskey, that's going to have the same rough flavor profiles only on the American side. Definitely the, the Basil Hayden Dark Rye. I just had some uh, before we shot this, and they're fairly similar. Yeah, uh, to be fair though, I, I am not willing to call the Dark Rye American Whiskey because they blended in some Canadian bullshit. Okay, all of that said, North American Whiskey. The Dark Rye <laughs> is a really good whiskey. It, especially, I don't know, I think it might still qualify for whiskey based on what I've actually learned uh, recently by Turing J. Reaper. If they do... 2.5% or less of the blended in wine, yeah. then it's still a whiskey. Because it's, uh, I looked up why, it's considered a pollutant, not an ingredient. Because uh... <laughs> you have to allow for some pollutants in the process. Okay. <laughs> Clever. Brilliant. That means there might be some similar flux room in straight bourbon. No. Or I don't bourbon. I don't. You, you're not willing to play with I, it if it is there. I honestly believe like you cannot physically add any. You cannot take anything and add it to the whiskey. Yeah, and still unless call it, it is water. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, not again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, we ranted for a while. Till we see you again, I'm Zach. And I'm Jake. We are the Dirt Road Men. <laughs> Solid eight for the Dalmore. If you like this video, uh, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, drop us a comment, and check out our uh, Facebook page for daily updates.